Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And just a reminder of you guys there, those of you that are not tuned in to our live stream broadcast, check it out in the subject line here on uh, Israeli News Live on live stream. We've got a link here in the subject line. You guys are missing news broadcast already. We do air broadcasts that do not air here on YouTube. And I've seen many of you guys have already been signing up over there to catch those broadcasts. Quick things that are going on, insights that the, maybe the Lord's just laid on my heart, etc. We're definitely putting those there. Uh, but when it comes to that in-depth coverage, we come right back here to YouTube where we've always done it all along. And tonight, a very important broadcast. Want to really know why Pope Francis met with the Egyptian Iman al-Azhar Tayyip is actually his name? Well, tonight you're going to find out. It is prophesied in the book of Joel about this particular meeting. Well, actually, I should say the results of the meeting. You know, we always have the old saying, you know, I wish I would have been a fly on the wall to know what's being said in that particular meeting. Why would the imam actually meet with the Pope of Rome? Well, it's not his first time the Egyptian imam has met with the Pope of Rome. Remember, uh, the Sunni Muslims are the ones that are faithful and loyal to the Catholic Church. They always have been. And of course, this imam here is the very one that the famous photograph, I wish I had put it on here for you guys, uh, where he gives a good lip smack kiss right dab on the mouth there of Pope Benedict. That's the one that went viral all over the internet. Very kind of a grotesque type picture, if you ask me, two men locking up lips the way they did. Uh, but nonetheless, there is a biblical significance about this story tonight, this particular meeting, and what's going on. We did a little bit of work in uncovering some of the background so you could see what's happening. But let's get right into the story itself, the meeting where Pope Francis has met with the top imam for the Muslim religion, the Sunni Muslims. Now remember, as we've stated before, the former Jesuit of the Catholic Church, Alberta Rivera, said that Cardinal B uh, told him that the Islamic faith was created by the Catholic Church in order to annihilate the believing Jews of Yeshua as well as to try to knock out as many of the Jews, period. They wanted to wipe them out completely. Well, I guess where they failed with uh, the Muslim faith, they then turned to Hitler later down the road. Anyway, getting right into the uh, Al Jazeera, who uh, reported, many news agencies have reported about the meeting today. Very little has been said about what the meeting was about. There was 30 minutes where the Pope spent with the Imam here. Uh, but anyway, Al Jazeera says, Pope Francis has met the Grand Imam of Cairo's Al-Azhar Mosque at the Vatican in the historic encounter that was sealed with a hugely, uh, hugely symbolic hug and exchange of kisses. The first Vatican meeting on Monday between the leader of the world's Catholics and the highest authority in a Sunni Islam marks the culmination of a significant improvement in relations between the two faiths since Francis took office in 2013. Now, the reason why they say a significant uh, improvement in relations is because even though after these two here had a big lip lock there with Pope Benedict, later Pope Benedict talked about uh, it was the Arabic world that's causing the, uh, the unrest in the Middle East. Well, that really went over like a lead balloon with uh, Mr. Tayyip here. He didn't like that statement at all. In fact, it led to even more violence in the Middle East, especially against the, the, the community there that is the professing Christian community. So I guess uh, Pope Benedict was right in his statement about that, wasn't he? Anyway, RT News also reporting on this event here state, stated the following the meeting. Al-Azhar Mosque said in a statement that the two sides had agreed to convene later as part of a peace conference. Interesting. A peace conference. Well, the imam's deputy Abbas Shumam told Egyptian TV channel CBC that the conference would cover issues of poverty, extremism, and terrorism. The Vatican, however, did not immediately confirm any conference plans. Well, no doubt. I'm sure they're definitely on the way. Now, let's take a look at the biblical aspect of this. 
In the book of Joel, chapter 3, anyone that knows anything about the book of Joel in chapter 3, this is the final hour. This is the day of redemption for Israel. This is where it speaks about the nations are gathered against Israel. They all come down. They're ready to do battle. This is where the Mashiach, the Messiah of Israel, steps on the scene and he begins to deal with Israel's enemies when they all come up against her. It also speaks of the peace that is going to be given to Israel at the end of all this battling. But when you get down near the end of the chapter, starting with verse 19, it says, Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land. My gosh, now watch. But Judah shall dwell forever, Jerusalem from generation to generation, for I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord dwelleth in Zion. Now, look at the wording right here, friends. For their violence against Judah, not against the house of Israel, not against the Israelites or the children of the Hebrews, but specifically against Judah, the house of Judah, which we know, according to Zechariah's prophecy, chapter 12, the house of Judah was to come home in order for reconciliation of iniquity, to make right the wrongs that they had done 2,000 years ago for the reason they were sent into exile in the very first place. They're home for making that reconciliation for iniquity. In other words, getting back on that right path where they erred from. Well, while they're getting back to get on that right path, trouble sets in. According to the prophecy in Joel here, God is blaming both Egypt and Adam for the troubles against the children of Judah, their violence, in fact. In fact, the Hebrew word their violence in Hebrew is Hamas. Yes, Hamas. Just like you have in Israel today, the, uh, the thugs of the Gaza Strip, Hamas, right there, that is against the Jewish people. Well, you could only imagine that Tayyib, the nice Mr. Cleric of the head of the, uh, the head imam of the Sunni religion there is very close to Hamas. Well, so is the Vatican. For that matter, so is Jimmy Carter, former president of the United States. A lot of people are kind of close to those guys there. But again, how do we know then Edom though is actually representing the Vatican? Because I'm sure some out there may not even know or have the slightest clue that connection there. Well, anybody that reads Daniel knows that the prince that shall come is of the people who destroyed the temple and the sanctuary. Is that right? The prince that shall come. Most people would say that's the Antichrist, but nonetheless, the guy that destroyed the temple and the sanctuary was none other than Titus, the Roman general. But then again, scholars would say, well, Titus wasn't the only guy, even though they have a huge ark right there in uh, Italy. I've taken the photograph many times, been there many times. Uh, you can see it for yourself. Uh, you know, they have the treasures depicted on there for Titus that he was the wonderful warrior that toppled Jerusalem in 70 AD and brought the tre treasures from the temple back to Rome. And according to one rabbi, a Moroccan rabbi, says he saw it for himself. The very golden menorah is there inside of the, uh, uh, in the catacombs there underneath the Vatican. All right. So besides Daniel identifying that the Romans there were the ones that were there and they would also produce the prince that shall come, we have the most compelling, damning evidence against Rome herself in the book of Obadiah. All right. And I'm just quickly turning to that here. And this is where it starts. If you go to verse six, how are the things of Esau searched out. How uh, are his hidden things sought up? Now, who's Esau? Esau, Jacob's brother. Remember, the Bible said that God loved Jacob and he hated Esau because he had a perpetual hatred towards his own brother Jacob. But if you ever look at the biblical account, it seems that there was a reconciliation between Esau and Jacob when he came down there to meet 
Jacob when he was coming back from Laban, from after he'd done gotten married and everything. Of course, what do we see? We saw that Jacob had to pay him off in order to buy peace with him. Same thing Israel's doing today. They're having to buy off their peace with, with the Vatican there. Very shame that this is happening, my friends. Very, very much a shame that Israel has to buy their peace from the Vatican, who's only going to turn on them in the first place. But nonetheless, God puts Esau, or Edom in this case here. Esau was given the name of Edom, biblically speaking. He says, And all men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. And they that eat thy bread have laid up a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Now notice that not only is Adam coming, but he's also, he's got a what? A confederacy with them. Isn't that Psalm 83? A confederacy is made. And by the way, even though Egypt is not specifically named in that confederacy, the very people that are listed in there are, some of those are Egyptian by birth. All right. So anyway, as he goes down, he says, For thy violence, verse 10, against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered his, his gates, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast as one of them. But thou shouldest not have looked upon the day of thy brother, and thy day of thy, and that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced, over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction, neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. So see, Adam or Esau is implicated by God. He's indicted for the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, just as Daniel also indicts Rome, Titus the Roman general, and even says he stood aloof just like scholars are saying today. Why? The Syrians, the army of the Syrian government, which was under the jurisdiction of the Roman authority because it had already been conquered by the Romans about 50 years before the destruction of Jerusalem or 40 years, something like that. So they had to go fight for Rome and do the battles for them. Just like today in modern days, NATO does the battles for the Vatican. Whatever uh, Rome says, they battle. Whoever they say to fight, they fight exactly the way it's going. Now, that just kind of set that stage for you. So we see Egypt shall be a desolation. Guys, I'm driving this in here because I want you to really see this is an incredible prophecy right here. The meeting between Pope Francis and the Imam of Egypt is laying right in front of your eyes. Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah. So all the violence that is happening in Israel against the children of Judah today can be blamed according to the prophecy of Joel back to the Vatican and to Egypt as well. In fact, specifically the imam there who is inciting it right along with the Roman cardinals. Let's look at this for the proof of this. Not just say it, but let's take a look at the proof. Al-Azhar promotes Islamic Christian coexisting coexistence against Islamic State terrorism, AsianNews.it uh, reported here. An international conference on terrorism harshly slams extremism and calls for the defense of Christian Coptic Orthodox Patriarch uh, Tuadros II. You can see him pictured in the screen there. He's basically the, uh, the, uh, the Egyptian Pope of that area. Uh, and the Grand Imam Amid Al-Tayyib, chair of the meeting, Teaching a moderate version of Islam will counter the brainwashing of youth. The West should not confuse Islam and terrorism. Then he says, Israeli aggression in the holy place is condemned. Well, there's definitely no coexistence when it comes to the Jews, only between the Muslims and the Catholics or the Christian community. So I guess that's all the Christians that join up with the Catholic Church. Anyway, continuing on, let's just kind of give you a little peek into there. Israeli aggression in the holy places is condemned. Holy places, what is considered holy? Hmm. Al-Azhar, Grand Imam, resistance, legitimate right of the Palestinians. Oh my gosh, you got to be kidding. He, said, he stated this in 2015, by the way, and I apologize. I get so much going on and I forgot to actually put the source for this particular article here. If you put the title in, you will immediately go to it though. 
the resistance of the Palestinian people is a legitimate right granted by decree of Islamic Sharia, as well as that of international charter said Al-Azhar, Grand Imam uh, uh, Ahmed el Tayyib to Hamas, former prime minister is uh, Ismail Khania in a recent meeting. I thought they promoted peace. Didn't know what he just said in his little statement back there. They were there for peace. Well, they must not be for too much peace there when it comes to the Jews. And according to the book of Joel, that's the exact thing. They're violence. They're Hamas against the house of Judah. All right. During the gathering in Cairo on Tuesday afternoon between a delegation from Hamas and El Tayyip, Hania stated that the resistance is a staple for the people of Palestine and that there will be no concessions provided uh, by the Palestinians on their choice of resistance until liberation of Palestinian soil. You don't think the guy doesn't back violence? When it comes against the house of Judah, yes, he does. Against Israel, yes, he does. Abbas justifies murder as protection of holy sites. Now, this was reported on Israel National News. Uh, it says, after ongoing Palestinian riots, which have including shootings, stabbings, and rocks and Molotov cocktail throwing. Now, remember, this is just last year in 2015. This article came out. All right. Now, the photograph I used, by the way, is not from that article. It is a 2013 photograph. Uh, it was from a television channel thing that I did. I put the photograph there to show you, show that Tayyip was with Mahmoud Abbas uh, so that you could see that. But anyway, he says here, uh, Mahmoud Abbas last week justified it all as legitimate defense of holy sites, reports Palestinian Media Watch. The Palestinian side did not attack and did not do anything against the Israelis. This is what he's saying. Friends, I was in Israel with my family on the first terrorist attack and I watched the man be drugged out from a bar, stabbed to death, and they laid him right there on the streets. A Palestinian terrorist had killed this man and wounded a second one. This is when it all began. We were there. Didn't even realize this is what was going on. And from that day forward, Brother, Brother Paul Bagley had came in right after me, and he also was there. In fact, I encouraged Brother Paul not to even go to Israel because the Intifada was getting into full swing. But God protected him. Now, here we are. Watch what it states here. Think that the Palestinian people in Jerusalem are protecting themselves. That is our right, he says. Now watch. I actually, I listened to it on the broadcast. He says, we have to protect our holy sites. And they didn't put it in the article here, but he also said Islamic and Christian. Abbas was quoted as saying by the official PA media. They're going to protect the holy sites, Christian and Islamic. Now this is what, this is also what, the Imam is calling for as well. All right. Now, again, does this, do you, we, we've gone over this many times. Expose the Vatican wants to lay its hands on Jerusalem. Guglielmo Miotti's article in 2011. And remember, only three days after this article came out, Hillary Clinton gets that email from her own aide saying, stir up riots there in Jerusalem, get the people back to the negotiating table, it says there will be no peace if the question of holy sites is not adequately resolved. Turon, that's Jean-Louis Turon, the Cardinal for the Vatican said, the part of Jerusalem with the walls, with the holy sites of the three religions is humanity's heritage. The sacred and unique character of the area must be safeguarded and it can only be done with a special internationally guaranteed statute. Shimon Perez said bring United Nations forces there. The Israeli government and the Vatican are deadlocked in discussions over the status of the religious sites. The Vatican officials are now reiterating their demand for control over the religious sites in the ancient and holy city founded by King David as the capital of the ancient Israel and now the capital of the reestablishment of the Jewish state. And friends, there's no peace. They say peace, peace, but there is no peace. And you have just seen Joel prophesy and he indicted Egypt as well as Adam or the Roman church, the Roman Catholic church, Esau's own descendants. He has indicted them. 
and said they'll both be desolate for their, for their violence against the house of Judah. You are looking at a prophetic sign. That meeting that happened with the Pope of Rome is nothing more, nothing less, but them working together to bring more violence against the Jewish people in, this, in the very country of Israel today. Is this another reason why I say to those people out there that always try to say, well, you know, the Jews that are there are not the Jews. My gosh, you don't see prophecy being fulfilled on a daily basis. Guys, you guys need to wake up. All this nonsense about, you know, the, 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 uh, the black man of America is actually the true Jews. I love my black brothers and sisters. I want you to know that. I love them with all my heart. But to sit there and try to say that somebody else is the Jews and not the Jews that are there now, I don't care what they look like. I don't care how much they don't like Christians. They're supposed to be blind. Did you not know Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 11, they're blinded for your sake. See, blinded for your sake. But that wild, uh, that natural olive branch will be grafted back into its own tree. Thus fulfilling the scripture, all Israel will be saved. Now, what does it mean by all Israel? That doesn't mean every single Jew living in Israel is going to be saved. No. That's all Israel, all that God ever foresaw, foreknew that we're going to believe, that would know that He knows they would believe that Yeshua is the Messiah. If their eyes were opened, He'll save everyone. Not one of them would be lost. Friends, this is a serious hour we're living in. And what a blessed thing God revealing to us the very key things here that are happening politically in the world news, letting us know that Egypt is actually directly working with the Vatican to bring violence against the house of Judah who is in her homeland even today. Blessed be his wonderful name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, for revealing these wonderful truths. I give him praise for letting us know these things. Anyway, God bless you guys. Thank you for watching. I, I'm excited about this. I really am. I'm very excited about it. I, I do ask you, just, I'm just making a couple more reminders here and then leave you guys alone about this. But if you, we, we do need your help in this trip that we're doing over to Israel. Uh, that's coming up. Uh, we leave here just days away. We'll be there covering things live. Uh, check it out, israelinewslive.org. Some people are telling me they have trouble getting in. Uh, so we'll also, in, our, in the subject line, will be a link. If you want to do it, uh, uh, by, if God lay, let me just say it this way. If the Lord lays it on your heart and you want to support this ministry, uh, there'll be a link as well directly to, uh, to where you can go online and donate that way there. It'll be in the subject line for you to make it easier. Um, and also, if you would rather just mail it, uh, a check by mail, you can do so. Go to israelreturns.com. Our address is there. Plus, it'll be at the end of the video as well.